Jim, you taking anything out? Besides your gorgeous self. Just three desperados melt. Armed and dangerous. See you tonight. Friday, I know. All day and all night. All right, let's move it. I done good? You done real good. You done perfect. I love you, beauty. Earl Lipscomb disappeared from Leavenworth Prison this morning, concealed in a supply truck driven by Cheryl Marcuse. 22 years ago, Lipscomb was accused only of civil of rights violations. He was serving time. consecutive sentences, totaling 40 years without possibility of parole. Psychiatrist Otis Underwood. These crimes weren't just about robberies. Earl Lipscomb killed 12 people, all unarmed. Eight were women. One was a six-year-old child. The robberies were merely an excuse to kill. Told me that. Lipscomb told me. Former high school classmate Tucker Town isn't right. surprised by his escape. Earl's very evil. And he's very smart. He's long gone by now. They're never gonna find him. Best I can figure, some people are just built wrong from the start. Town said Lipscomb was a loner. His mother Eunice passed away, leaving him with no immediate family. State officials insist they have the resources to catch Lipscomb. The governor, however, made an emergency call to the U.S. Attorney's Office, requesting priority attention from the U.S. Marshal Service and the assignment of one of its top trackers. This is not a blind run. Lipscomb had a long time to plot this out. No, I think he'll be out of the country in the next 24 hours if we don't find him. Check out the details. Cheryl Marcuse, AKA Beauty, she spent a year setting up the escape, changed her appearance, got the job in transport, and then seduced the guard. No, I don't think she planned on getting strangled. She just bought that farmhouse a month ago. Yeah, it must be a hideout. Right. Yeah, I notified Wichita. I'll call you if I need you.
Rightway bus lines, can I help you? Uh, yes, I hope so. I was wondering, did someone call a little after 3.20 and ask about some information? Uh, sir, we have more than one reservations operator, and we don't keep track of all our customers' calls. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, what if someone did call uh, about 3.20 and ask about what time the next bus would leave and where it was going? Would you tell them? Um, that would be the 3.30 bus to Wichita. Wichita. John, you better put out some new beast art. Lose the beard. He might have colored his hair. You're at the farmhouse? Did you yeah. see him? No, I didn't see him, but I guarantee he shaved. Shaved, huh? Mm -hmm. Did he get close? Didn't get a chance. Somebody scared him off. I think he's on his way to Wichita. So we got another player? No, I don't know. But it's somebody. <sighs> yeah. Keep me posted. All right, I'll stay in touch. All right. Want to? Want to what? You come this place often. What side are you? A little small talk then. You want to? I'm a little square. You forgot, can I buy you a drink? Can I buy you a drink? Ernie, bring us two beers and cans. Come on, Earl. So what's a square? Squares have money, places to entertain. I actually I was hoping your place. Of course you were. Well, guess what, honey? We're home. No friends, Earl. That's bad. Absolutely nothing. Sir, we searched that place from time yeah, to time. Yeah, relax. I doubt Lipscomb broke out of jail so we could sit around in the Wichita bus station. Marshal, revised photo will be at all roll calls first thing in the a.m. I'd appreciate it if you get some uniforms to distribute this right away. You know, some of these uh, fugitives got their own schedule. He might just decide to leave before a roll call. In fact, at every hotel and motel has a machine, please. Yes, sir. You really think he's in Wichita? Definite possibility. I don't want him in Wichita. Yeah, thank you, at least. Oh, that's more than five minutes. 
You did good. Do my best. It's okay. Maybe we can do it again. It's okay. You heard the shot, huh? I said I did. I said it before, but five minutes after they checked in. Did you get a look at the car? I did. I called the second I saw the facts. The second. Did you get a look at the car? A look at cars, Marshal. Makes my customers nervous. You know what I mean. I did the right thing, though. Calling it in. I I'm only asking, because there might be, uh, you know. Well, sometimes virtue is its own reward, you know what I mean? Right. Cause of death? Suffocation following manual strangulation. Unofficial. Somebody put a bullet in his shoulder. Through her shoulder. In my opinion, when she was already dead. Icing on an ugly cake. Found this in the headboard. Fired from near the door. Cartridge case is in there, too. I've never seen one like it. I'm trying to catch a guy and bring him in in five minutes after he checks in. Somebody else shows up shooting. Another guy who doesn't want to bring him in. Oh, man, an extra guy. I hate extra guys. my fault. It was Earl. You can, you can see that. gonna need money, wheels, and clothes. Nothing's open yet. I don't think Earl's worried about store hours. The house full of department stores, men's shops, malls. No way we can cover them all. Well, I think Earl's gonna look a little conspicuous shopping uptown in his underwear. Where's your skid roll? Tanya, it is a book show a firm that makes 45 ammo with a cartridge mark WD. Yeah, W period, D period. Well, get Ernie to check some of the old books first thing in the morning, will you? This slug looks like it's from the Stone Age.
Texas. Oh, what museum did that come out of? Huh. I had a 45 during the war. That was from World War I vintage. And it wouldn't jam too much as long as you kept it clean, clean gun, clean ammo. This thing hasn't been clean since Eisenhower was a captain. See all that green crud and corruption? Shooter's lucky that damn thing didn't blow up in his hand. WD, it's all right. You're not supposed to remember because you weren't even born yet. War Department? War Department, I think. That's before they changed it to Department of Defense. and They started calling wars conflicts. Yeah, 1918. Damn thing's older than I am. Scoblo? Yeah, the youngster's right here with me. I'll write him right down. Hmm? You got it, sir. No sign. It's gone in, got his outfit. Split. Yeah, top of your flashlight. All the glass on the outside, which means he busted out. Somebody broke in over here. Bust in the door, bust out the window. He's still running for more than just us. Square block perimeter set up. I don't think he can get much further than that with your unknown hunting dog on his trail. Still close. What's to the west? Oh, train tracks and wheat fields. East? River. North will get you downtown. South's more of this. He's headed for the train. Third and water. I got a fugitive and a deputy U.S. Marshal on that train and needed stop. We can do that. Yeah, well, like I said, also appreciate it if you could tell me where. Where what? Where you're gonna stop it.
Thank you. Uh, I, I can uh, fix it up, make things better, Jesse. You almost shot me. Oh, Jesse. I'm gonna jam both our plans, huh? I'll just lie still. We got three choppers up, trying for four. We got a roadblock set up every single way out of here. Marshal? Huh? Yeah. Come here. I know this old guy. He's just like me. But buddy's got some miles on him, kiddo. 70, 75, maybe. 75. In three weeks, according to the DMV, this dropped out of his pocket. He stashed the car in a carry hall in Lindsborg. A bar? Maybe 10 miles from your current location. So what about my girl? She's in. You and the marshal headed to the car? Yeah, yeah, on her way. I'll set at the hospital where the light touch has requested. I appreciate it. I told you, Mama, the ball holes were too small. My fingers got stuck. Of course I fell. My hand never came off the ball. Like, I fell straight to the ground. Look, I just called to tell you I'm OK. M Mama? We're breaking up. Mama? Mama? You're awake. You feeling better? I think trains are very glamorous. I say this because I heard a rumor you were injured on a train. I I I'm OK. He's got a expired driver's license, address is a P.O. box in Bismarck, social security card and $83. A sorry way to wind up. Sad case. I wonder how he got that way. 74 years, there's plenty of time for bad things to happen. Yeah, well, I figure Lipscomb is the main bad thing to happen to Cooper. I don't think you should be doing that. It's OK. I've been through worse. I really think you should wait for the doctor. He'll be back any minute. You worry too much. I think you're like that mama you were just talking to. I am nothing like her. OK, OK, OK. I take it back. Uh, you think I could uh, use your phone? I'll pay you for the call. Do you really take that back? About me and my mom? I swear. I'll take it back. You guys hadn't closed me down. I, uh, I, Alexander I Cooper, him. probably a PI or an ex-cop. Check North Dakota and Jason Station. Station's and get been up into closed Canada. for 18 months. The only yeah. reason we found is because the owner yeah. came by with this guy from the bank. Seems they're going to foreclose, auction uh -huh. the place off in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Cross-check for any connection to Lipscomb. Yeah, you can reach me at uh, Wichita oh, PD, Scobla's office. Lipscomb uh, stashed the car, traded in for one of the guy's trucks, his best truck, he says. I put it in APB. How long ago did he trade it? Could have been two hours ago. Well, that's a good piece of time. You already got some. Give me that. Just, just, just... Off. Huh. It's retired from Bismarck PD in 1969. Set up a bail bonds office there at the end of that year. Business failed into 72. And then he falls off the earth for five or six years. 72, the year Lipscomb commits his first felony, Cooper snaps. Early 73, splits with the wife. Divorce goes through in 74. Oh, wife dies the end of that year. Jesse. Uh, Jessica, what, you got a crystal ball? January 1978, he pops up in Danville, California, captures a small-time felon, turns him in, and he gets rewards, it's $2,500, which he probably spent paying some of these fines, vagrancy, public intoxication. I knew he was a tracker. Yep, he's a body hunter. Well, he's picked up three or four rewards every year since then. They're all over the map. 
Nothing big time. Nothing like Earl Lipscomb. Lipscomb's personal. Cooper's obsessed with him. You keep saying that. What about you? You taking him personally, Cooper? No, it's just a way to Lipscomb. I'm just doing my job, nothing personal. I just thought maybe you were seeing yourself down the line someplace. You're both trackers. Okay, I was wrong. I see shadows once in a while. Everybody does. You want to answer that? Are you in love with your wife? Yeah. <laughs> you jamming me here, Chief, or just busting my chops? Cooper probably never thought he'd wind up like this. That's all I'm saying. Look, Chief, I'm not Cooper, all right? I'm very clear about that. Why don't you pick up the phone? Fine, good. Picking up the phone. Scablo. Oh. Oh, well, well, well. Oh. You should have seen it, Lieutenant. Alex Cooper willed himself out of here. We had a couple uniforms down the hall, like you said. The second they drifted, Cooper was up. Did he say anything? Not much. He said a guy would probably be by to see him. About 35. 6'1", about 170 pounds, brown hair, very blue eyes. Good-looking boy, he said. He wanted you to deliver a message? Right. Tell him to leave me alone. That's word for word. What about phone calls? One call, Bismarck, North Dakota. I traced the number to a bar, a place called Molly and Jack's. Bartender says only about 300 people could have answered the phone. That's where he's going, Bismarck, according to Terry and Bergen. He's been on the guy since he walked. Took the bus to the V-dub, the V-dub toward Bismarck. Can you give me a lift to the airport? Uh, oh. Um, you want to hear the tape? Hey, Tom, you ready in there? Just have dispatch send the tapes through the car. It's me. Where the hell are you? Kansas, on my way. What happened at the farmhouse? Nothing's a sure thing, Mr. Town. Yeah, he's coming here. He's coming here, and I'm a dead man. No, he still needs you. You give him what he wants, and you take him to the hill like we talked about. Yeah. And then what? And then it ends. I pick up my mail, I go to the hill, and it ends. Well, what do you think? I think Mr. Cooper's gonna need a new gun. You be careful up there. The beast has got his own set of rules. That extra guy, I don't think he cares what game he's playing. I don't think he's playing any game. Thanks, Chief. I don't get any on you. You could be Cooper, but you're not. Why don't you just say you're welcome? I say thank you, you say you're welcome. Can you say that, Chief? You jamming me or you busting my chops? Just busting your chops. Now get out. I found him, honey. Believe me now, I found Earl. I'm gonna make things right. I brought back Earl, and I gotta send him straight to hell. You watch me, Jesse. Hey, Sucker Town. I'm good, good. Yeah, not like I expected. We're a little ahead of last month. Yeah, we've unloaded about 20 units, and uh, I'd like to come down and take a look at the auction. We've got those. But we're holding on a couple of Buicks now, so I'm going to have to hold off on those. There's some other stuff we can get into. Sure Hang on. Hey, can I call you back? Yeah, thank you. Can I help you? Listen, if you're interested in the car, I... I love this car, Tucky. Earl.
It's Bismarck PD. This has got to be Lipscomb. According to the Burley County Airport people, the pilot filed a flight plan for Chicago. Where's this road lead? Into town. There's not much traffic. Buses I got run my... here? Yeah, buses into town. <sighs> 50 grand. More than enough to get you up and running. Of course, you're welcome to any car on the lot. I really love that red car out there, don't you? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Be hard spotting you in that, baby. You just blend right in. <laughs> Come on, man. You've done real good for yourself since high school. I held up my andro. Did you? Yeah, I did. It's not over yet, Tucky. Now, what does that mean? Let's go for a ride. Here's the warrant. Yeah, the duplicates are in there, and you're all set with the judge. I appreciate it. You gonna catch Lipscomb with that? It's kind of like a two-step deal, you know what I mean? Wish I had a choice. Well, good luck. Thank you. Anything for me? You know, if you got Earl in there, we can call it a day. See the old house, huh? Bad news, guy. They tore your place down years ago. Should have asked. You moved? Yeah. Me and Franny, we uh, bought a house out near the park. Right. What's it got? Two car garage, swimming pool, cable TV. Uh, yeah, it's. Listen, I take you out there, but to be frank, there's gonna be a lot of people looking for you. Pictures been all over the newspaper and the TV. I saw. I didn't much like the way you trashed me on the tube. I was covering for you. Come on, what'd you expect me to say? That you're blackmailing me? He signed a paper. He made a promise. He broke a promise? That's what this is all about? No. He destroyed my life. Well, if you say so, I believe you. I don't want to argue about that. $25,000. Did you ever lose $25,000? Alex, that's what bail bondsmen do, right? They put up the money. You know that. Well, 10th reunion was the best, man. You should have been there. Darby Lake gained about 150 pounds, and she wanted to do that flaming baton routine. <laughs> yeah, I'd be there. And they're all asking about you, man. You're famous. I kept saying, Earl's the beast, man. You're the beast. <laughs> was Mr. Cooper there, Tuck? Cooper? Who's that, the, uh, what, the shop teacher with a rug hat? I don't know, I never took shop from the guy before. The bail bondsman. Someone tipped him off to the farmhouse. What? Three people knew where I was going when I broke out. Me, you, and Beauty. You think it was Beauty told Cooper? Beauty. Yeah. Yeah, I never trusted her, you know? Let's go to the hill, right? Okay. Yeah. Tell you what, you leave me off there, go get some more money, bring it back, and I'll be out of your hair. What money? I already gave you 50. We agreed on 50 grand, Earl. Just tell me where he is. You know I'm a pretty good tracker myself. I'm not telling. Uh-uh. No way. Alex, this is not going to bring Jesse back. Just tell me where he is, and we can put an end to this whole thing. I'll tell you, but I'm going with you. A team. All right. Well, she was very sick by Jesse after Earl ran out on us. When she died, I was alone. Boy, the way I've lived since then. Uh, 
tough deal any way you cut it. I'm not gonna tell you I know how you feel. You don't, you can't know. Remember that night, Tucky? Hey, I'll get more money. Come on, give me the keys. Us and Mitzi? Well, we were a team. No fighting about who went first. Come on, I gotta get you out of here. Quit messing around. You made her scream. You shouldn't have done that. That's how we got caught. You owe me big time, Tucky. Come on, I said I'd get more money, didn't yeah. I? You remember when you, uh, you rolled over on me? When I skipped the bail? Said I did it? You were just a spectator. You lied then. You're lying right now. You did tell the old guy that I was gonna be going to the farmhouse, didn't you? Come on. Hey! Huh? God. You're gonna kill me. Oh. I wanna hear you say it! I wanna hear about that night! I'm gonna be sick, huh? You say it. You say that I might not kill you. <sighs> I can't hear you. Uh, what? Say, I raped Mitzi. I raped Mitzi. Oh! Here we are. This is where we go, just up that little hill. Now, you let me go first, and then you follow me up. Hey, what are you doing? We're a team, you promise. Sorry, Alex, I reconsidered today. It's just not a good day to be a team player. Besides, you're too dangerous. Hey, you come back! Wait a minute! Don't do this! I promise I'll get you more money. More? We agreed on 50. Earl! Let's talk about Cooper. Tell me how you told Cooper about the farmhouse. All right, all right! Right, I'll tell you. I told Cooper. Let me hear it. Kill him! Kill him! Deputy U.S. Marshal. Put the gun down, Earl. You shoot me, I shoot him. He's a big shot, you know. Either way, it's up to you. Kill him! Wow. It is up to me. Yes, it is. You don't want to do this. Your gun blew up on him, it's over. So what? He missed. He didn't miss. I put blanks in that gun. Want to see my warrant? I'm old. I'm tired. There he is, Alex. The beast. We got him, partner. And finally tonight, Earl the Beast Lipscomb is back behind bars in Bismarck, North Dakota, captured not by police or the U.S. Marshals who were hunting him, but by a private senior citizen. Alex Cooper, a former bounty hunter who says he's well into his 60s, caught Lipscomb single-handedly late this afternoon after a dramatic chase through the hill country west of the city. Next on the Marshal. Found another body in the park. Another one over here. Is that one of the bodies? Yes. How long do you think this guy was buried? The body I'm looking at is a minimum five years dead. It's uh, some kind of serial killer, isn't it? No. 
never planned on killing a federal marshal. All those in favor of Ray putting his gun down, raise their eyebrows. This is Willow Bay. And Antonio Mora, Sunday, how not to get ripped off on the happiest day of your life. Also, Ralph Snodsmith with tips on how to get your garden ready for spring on Good Morning America Sunday. Here on ABC. Sunday on Brinkley. O.J. Simpson guilty? Ask blacks and whites and you'll get different answers. Race as a factor in the trial. Hear from Detective Mark Furman's attorney Sunday.